Brady and I were talking about the Olympic Games and the medals, gold, silver and bronze, that all the athletes are going to win for their excellent um, performances. And Brady suddenly thought and asked me about the medals that I'd won and wanted to see them again. So I looked around and quite to my surprise, I discovered that I've won bronze, silver and a gold medal. I'm absolutely hopeless at sport and I've never even won a race at school, let alone anything else. So these are for chemistry, not for sport. So let's have a look. They're not easy to open. Um, this one here, bronze medal, bronze is an alloy of copper and tin, so it's not an element. And you can see this one's not even round. And I won this when I was 30, and I was quite um, disappointed. I thought it looked like a gravestone. It um, was awarded by the Royal Institute of Chemistry, an organisation that doesn't even exist anymore. It's become the Royal Society of Chemistry. I won this when I was quite young. And then more recently, I won the silver medal. And this one here is for education in chemistry. In fact, it's thanks to you, the YouTube viewers, that I won this one. So in some ways, this is really your medal. And some of you might come to Nottingham one day and have a look at it. And the gold medal, which is here, is from the Royal Society and was for my research. You can see it's the biggest and the heaviest. And this is not pure gold. This is so-called nine carat gold, which means it's nine parts in 22 is gold. But even so, there's slightly more than 100 grams of gold in here. And I've never ever seen such a large lump of gold as this in my life. And it's really very heavy. You can ask, why do chemists or scientists in general win medals? And they are, on one hand, prizes for people doing good research or doing well in education. And there's something to recognize the contribution they've made, but also to encourage people to try and have some target that they want to try and reach. And the difference between these medals and the sports medals is that people tend to be quite old when they win them. When you're young, you might get a bronze, when you're old, a silver. And if you're really lucky, and I was very lucky, you might get gold when you're grey and old like me. I would have thought science would almost be a profession that would be above medals. It would almost be too too snobby, too, too much like it's not about medals, it's about the science. You know, I would have thought maybe scientists would think medals is a very superficial thing that you would have in sport, but not in science. But that doesn't seem to be the case. There seem to be medals flying around every year in science. People imagine that scientists are very cool and calculating, but they're really very competitive. And in some ways, they're just as competitive as athletes. It's just that the race between them is not quite so obvious as when people are running around the track or doing the marathon. But people are racing to be the first to discover this or the first to solve a particular problem. And it can get really quite competitive, sometimes even unpleasant if you have two groups that are really trying to get there first. I think that's what makes science good. It would be really boring being a scientist if everybody was like a cool calculating robot. They're human beings. They have all the failings that everybody else has, the same sort of ambitions, and you get the same range of people. You get those who are very nice and very modest. You get those who are really arrogant and no different from the worst sportsman. What kind are you? I think that's not for me to judge. The other thing which is slightly different is that in science, men and women compete equally rather than sports where you have the women's events and you have the men's events. And in science, everybody's equal and people from every country are equal. And I think science has been an international activity for hundreds of years. 
and like the Olympic Games, which only started about 100 years ago or slightly more. So international science and the competition in science has been going for a long time. There were arguments at the end of the 18th century, who discovered oxygen first and things like that. I've known you for a while now and I've actually known you when you've won one or two of your medals and something I've noticed and I'm assuming this is just a chemist thing is when you are lucky enough to win a medal for some reason you immediately take quite a big interest in its composition what it weighs what its purity is do you think all chemists do that when they win medals no I don't think so it's just that I'm I'm an obsessive on these things and it was really quite interesting but particularly with gold where I knew it wasn't pure because if it was pure it would be so soft that if you dropped it on the table it would mark so I really wanted to know what it was and I suppose there was a bit of nerdish curiosity how many grams of gold have I really got how did you find out I, I actually emailed the people who was presenting it to me and they didn't know so they emailed the Royal Mint and they told them 